G'day folks, Rich Bird S here from Brighter Days in sunny Christchurch, New Zealand with a overview of the new Creator Team um, team action that's available in Power Automate and I think it's a game changer um, out there in the market when it hits its moment, it's preview, but when it goes live it's going to make the ability to create teams with channels and members and owners way more accessible than it's been previously. A lot of organizations, um, of brighter days included, have built lots of functions to be able to provision teams um, using Azure functions um, in logic apps um, because you couldn't catch the APIs you needed to to be able to provision the teams the way you wanted to inside of um, a Power App or um, Power Automate workflow. And so now with the, with the new change, um, it's going to make a big difference. So I'll step you through how this looks um, and we can then discuss um, how you can make your own Teams provisioning engine. So let's go for that. All right, let's just escape out of this. Uh, show. Uh, I've lost my mail. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. There it is. All right, so we've got a SharePoint list is my going to be my data source in this example could be common data service or oaken fold whatever we're going to call it these days but it's out there um, as a data source but the list contains just a few fields so the title which is the team title who's my owner who's my secondary owner who are my members multi-select and then a department um, I've also got um, in my um, SharePoint list the lookup um, column where I can have like business applications modern workplace marketing different departments that might need different channels in their teams and my workflow is going to look up this list and it's going to add channels um, based on the type of request I've got um, and let's show you first of all how we're going to make the workflows run um, I've got two workflows that I can use in my power app the first one is to check um, whether the team name already exists um, so super simple way to do that, um, we'll send a response back to the Power App when we're ready to, but what we can do now is list teams in preview. The one question I've got around this connection at the moment is, what's going to happen when I get more than 100 teams? Is it going to just do 100 or can I paginate it through to show me thousands of teams? But at the moment I can't see that under the settings. In terms of can I grab how many I can get, um, but we'll see what happens there. Um, as we go, as it's still in preview, I expect change to happen. But what this will do though, <coughs> I can send from Power Apps a variable which is my team name, um, and I can go and, and that's this second variable is a just a response back variable which I want to use. But what I can do is I can go and get a list of all the teams, and then in my apply to each step, uh, we'll build this in a sec as well so I can show you how it works. But I want to check if the chosen team name I've got is equal to the team name in the list of teams that I've found. And if it is, then append to a string variable that the, t the name is taken. Um, and then if not, just carry on. And then I've got a quick, if the name is taken, respond to Power Apps with name already taken, please select another. And then if no, then basically the team name is available. That's a real simple way to check um, if your team already exists. You could do it, um, I'm doing it in the Power App, which I'll show you. Um, but you could do it as part of the create step as well and respond back to the Power App if a person pushed a button. But sometimes it's nice for them to type in a name and then push a button or have an um, on-change action to go and check the name and give them a notice. So I'll show how that works. The second flow uh, we've got running is how we create the team. And this is using the created team preview um, and then lists. And then I'm also building channels in here as well. So Great, easy way to start off a SharePoint list, um, accessible to all the citizen developers out there. Basically, when a team's created, that's the action. First thing I'm gonna do is go and get the channels. So that's my list in SharePoint of all of these channels here, okay? And then I'm gonna go, within creating teams, adding team members, um, you will need to use the your Azure Active Directory ID of your user, which is often your UPN, of your user, which you can get from the Office 365 users connection. Often it will be a people's email, but I've worked within organizations where the Azure ID is a different um, email type than it is to what people actually use in those terms of friendly. So it's good to go off and get the people. So we go and get the, we get the owner, we get the secondary owner, and then we create a team. And then creating a team now um, in 
Power Automate is so easy, it's just that. Um, the advanced option is do I make it public or private? Uh, but it is basically grab the title from my item and I make a team. Takes maybe 20 seconds, job done. Okay, and then I've put a delay right after that just in case because I wasn't sure how it was going to work with cleanup and that sort of thing. So then what I do is I go off and I get the list of teams um, and then I apply to each basically what I found because basically I'm going to search up the team name is equal to the team I've just created um, and then I'm going to add my owner. So that's another action you can use. It's called add a member to a team. Um, I've renamed it add owner to team um, and then when you do that you can choose whether they're going to be an owner or not. Um, and they do, often when, when you're provisioning with a Logic App um, or an Azure function to create a, add, add a person into a team, you have to have to add them as a member first and then make them an owner. Uh, with this function now, if I just say make them an owner, then they're going to get all the rights that an owner would have. They can add, um, add tabs, add other um, lookups, different people, all sorts of things that a normal team owner would expect, um, which you don't often get. Sometimes you've got to do a two-stage thing in Azure Function. Um, so then we basically grab through, we add the secondary owner, and then what I do is I get in the SharePoint list, I've got a list of team members. Um, it's a person field, and it's multi-select. Um, so I basically loop through all of them, get their user profile, and what I'm doing there is just getting their UPN, um, and then I add the member to a team, basically loop through, loop through, loop through, add all of the team members using the add a member to a team. Real easy, it's, it's simple as that. And I, do I want to make them an owner or not? These are members, so I've left them as blank. And then I add my channels. Um, and then basically this is the value of the um, lookup that we had for the channels. Um, and then based on that, basically for all the team ID of the team I just made, add a column, uh, sorry, add a channel based on that. Um, so again, I'll show you how that works, but again, super simple, look up my list of channels and add them into my team as I go. And then I just send an email confirming that it's done. So let's have a look at the setup within the Power App. Um, again, super, super easy, and I'll open up Teams as well, and drag that over so we can, oops, I lost my mouse again, there we go bring that up and we can see uh, on the left here different teams right so let's just remember that for the future okay so let's do the teams app and so we've, we've got simple mobile phone based power app uh, with a fancy button populating there so I'll leave it up there for a little bit so you can see the transition happening um, that's pretty cool uh, basically I'm gonna push that though and I'm gonna go through to my what I want to make okay and if we do, so basically let's put a name into here, which is new team, team. Um, and this is my option to create, check the team name availability. So we can see we're running off into Power Automate and then with team name is available. So that's just a simple step, which is this workflow here that we just ran. Let's get out of that, show you that that one ran 12 seconds ago. So basically from Power Apps, we went off and we got Rich's new team. We set that as the variable there. Uh, we listed the teams. We didn't find any of those 14 teams, but we go to the last one, um, check if the name exists. It's false, so nothing happens down there. So the team name that comes back to the Power App is team name available. All right. And then I can basically jump in here and add me as there. We'll put Lee as my secondary owner and we'll put Sutter and whoa Karen and let's put Benji in there as well. All right. So then we've got department. Let's pick business applications as my department and then submit. Okay. And then my team successfully the flow has successfully been called. Um, and let's go into the, the Power Automate and see that happening. No runs. Hold on one second. Cool. And a quick refresh brings back our flow. We can see it is running. Um, let's see what's going on. So there's a delay in here, which is probably by the time I end up clicking this thing, we're going to be halfway through it. All right, so we've created the team. We've checked out the team channels. We check the team channels, sorry. We've created the team. Uh, we've done our delay. We've listed the teams, and now we're running through our apply to each. Um, 
and it's just gonna basically grab um, the various owners that we want for our team. So that's just gonna tick away and be done. But if I jump into Teams whilst this is going on, whoa, that's big. Um, you can see Rich's new team, and we've got basically, we're already caught up, so there's, that's been built. Um, and we've got, oh, you can see the, the bolts coming through now, but those are the three channels. Um, whoop, whoop. So it's building them as we, as we go. Um, that are going to show up in my team. So that's finished now. There we go. So open up the last one. Um, so we've got no one on the 15, but if we go to the, this is the 15th team in our little tenant here, and we can see we've added the owners. We've gone through, we've looped through the three people that we wanted to add. Um, we've added Sutter, we've added Caroline, and we've added Benji. So they'll have access. Um, and then we've added the channels that we wanted to have. So the display never process flows project management, and app demos. So then the team's that's finished, job done. Um, now we've called this team, oh, it's not really working on the push up, um, which is new team, and if I jump into that, manage the team, then we'll see who's in it. And so we've got Lee as the other owner, and then in our members and guests, we've got our three folks in as well. So it just works as expected, right? So easy to, easy to create using Power Automate. Um, so let's do Rich's new team test again. Let's just check if we're gonna try and run this. So let's look at that button again, because it's really cool. Um, let's request the team and we'll do Rich's new team. Let's run that check thing, because if you're gonna open up team provisioning to people and you don't wanna have an approval step, you wanna have some sort of check to make sure that the user can see, hey, that name's already taken, do something else. And then what I've done there is I've hidden the button when, um, okay, so they can't submit um, they have to change their name. So we change it to Teams, um, just because someone will probably do that in your organization because they will like the name, so they want to keep it as close as possible. And then that name is available and I can continue. So let's just run through um, creating the Power Automate to make this happen. So whatever your trigger is, you're gonna need to have that, but adding um, the steps for your Microsoft team creation and provision is super easy. So it's basically click your add an action. And then if it doesn't show up in your all list, uh, mine is, um, yours may not be, but just do a Microsoft Teams or Teams check, grab that, and you'll see all the new functions that are, that are here. And this is it, create a team. It's as simple as adding that in and it is done, right? So just give it a name. Um, you're gonna wanna have a dynamic data source, I would suggest for your team name. Um, or you can have it manually running, but you're gonna wanna grab that against the a data source or a form submission. It could be a, a Microsoft form, it could be even easier than that. It could, doesn't have to be a Power App, um, could be a form, but useful with a Power App rather than a Microsoft form because you can look up other data sources in a Power App, right? You can go off and look at SharePoint lists and mash that data up into your Power App, nice low code way rather than the Microsoft form where you have to statically add that content. Um, and it could get out of date if someone adds a new department and you don't update your Microsoft form. But with a Power App, if you connect to a data source with that list of departments, it will always update as you go. Um, the other actions that we can see here for Microsoft Teams, uh, we've got add a member, so that's the one we did. Um, and then what I've done here as well is create a channel. That's the third one I was doing. Uh, now I could do other things like listing channels, um, I could get a team um, and take an action with that team, but the cool ones that, that I've worked on in the last couple of days to really simplify how we're going to provision teams at Brighter Days is create a team, create a channel, and add a member to a team. So that will give you probably 99% of all your use cases that you're going to need when you provision, if you want to auto-provision your Microsoft Teams. The key thing to note is if you want to add tabs uh, into your teams then you're not going to get that with this action yet um, i imagine that will happen you will still need if you're going to stay in power automate you will still need to go and call um, the teams microsoft graph api um, with a http call or a webhook um, or you could jump into logic apps and do it that way but if you're going to do power automate then keep it all in the one bubble um, if you want to add other libraries and columns connect to content types you can still do it in your Power Automate. You're just going to need to use an HTTP send to SharePoint, so call the REST service, which is kind of what you'd have happen um, or similar to that in a um, Logic App or an Azure function. Um, so you can still do it here. Um, but what I wanted to show you was these, these this create a team, add a member, create a channel, 
is so much easier now um, and it's going to change how um, a lot of us approach how we provision teams um, for our clients um, in, in consulting. So yeah, if you give it a shot, let me know how you find it, um, come back to me. Um, it'd be great to hear how you're getting on with it. It is in preview, so it is gonna change. So it's not general availability. If you can't see it yet, check that you are in early release. If you're not, just wait for a bit or watch this video and prepare yourself, um, build an engine so you can provision your teams when this functionality arrives in your tenant. Thanks everybody, cheers, bye.